Greetings Earthlings, Megan here, and today we are going to review some of my essential tips for caring for sensitive skin. This will be a two-part video, so this week we'll be reviewing the first half, next week we'll be reviewing the second half, so let's get into it. I am a beauty product developer, so I've developed many products in the skincare category over the course of my career, working behind the scenes in the beauty industry. And then additionally, I actually have skin, sensitive skin myself, so I do have some personal experience on this matter. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a dermatologist, so this video in no way constitutes medical advice. If you believe you have a skin condition like psoriasis, like eczema, like rosacea. These are technically medical conditions that would require a doctor or a dermatologist to diagnose and treat them. Okay, so first of all, what is sensitive skin? How do you know if you have sensitive skin? What are the signs of sensitive skin? If you tend to have skin that gets red in response to products, if you get um, small bumps that look like irritation after using a new product or a particularly strong product, if you have any itching or burning, you develop rashes in response to um, skincare products, all of these can kind of be signs of sensitive skin. Think of sensitive skin as like a spectrum. Some people have mildly sensitive skin. Some people have extremely reactive sensitive skin. So you can think of sensitive skin as a spectrum. And then another thing to keep in mind is that everybody's skin is different and everybody has different triggers when it comes to um, their sensitive skin. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So for instance, I know a trigger for me is fragrance and products when I'm using them on my face. Not all fragrance, just in general fragrance. You know, some people find that they react to spicy food or hot beverages. I don't react to those things. I can have tea and spicy Indian curry and I don't have any issues. So just keep in mind that everybody's different. Everybody has different triggers. So you can start kind of identifying what your potential triggers might be. So you can start avoiding those in the future to see if your skin um, calms down. So tip number one, and this is actually the most important tip, is to be gentle with your skin. You want to be as gentle as you can with sensitive skin, and that's because sensitive skin is sensitive and reactive. So you want to avoid rubbing your skin excessively, scrubbing it excessively. Um, you want to avoid harsh products, and we'll talk more about what that means. Um, avoiding really hot temperatures outside, or avoid, avoiding excess sun exposure. These are all um, small things that you can do to help just kind of protect your skin. So tip number two kind of falls in line with this common sense um, headspace that we're in when it comes to caring for sensitive skin. So tip number one, be gentle, common sense, right? Tip number two is to look for products that are made for sensitive skin, say they're safe for sensitive skin, say they're designed for sensitive skin. A lot of times, and I know this from experience, is that when companies are developing products um, and they want to say that a product is good for sensitive skin, there's actually third-party clinical testing facilities that beauty companies can use or skincare companies can use to double confirm that a formula is good for sensitive skin and they would be doing this prior to launching. So this is a pretty common sense way of helping you navigate all of the products out there by immediately honing in on products that are made for sensitive skin. In looking for products that are made for sensitive skin, it immediately um, narrows down all of your options, which is actually a good thing because when you think about how many beauty products are out there, it's crazy how many are out there. Tip number three I think is really important and that is to avoid or be cautious of fragrance and product. You know, everybody's skin is different. Um, so you might have sensitive skin, but you might be fine with fragrance. Um, for instance, you know, my facial skin tends to be reactive to, 
to some fragrance, not all fragrance, but my body tends to um, tolerate fragrance products very well. And I know people who are the exact opposite. So this is another <laughs> example of how everybody's just very different. But in general, fragrance can be a trigger for folks. And it doesn't matter where, whether a fragrance is synthetic or natural, fragrances, regardless of their origin, can be sensitizing to people. And that includes essential oils. So you might want to just be wary of whether products are fragranced or whether they have a fragrant aroma to them. These can be triggers for sensitive skin types. Tip number four would be finding your ideal moisturizer. And the reason is, is because sensitive skin can really benefit from supplementing and supporting the skin barrier. And we'll talk about what that means. So the skin barrier is the very outermost layer of your skin, and it's responsible for keeping the good stuff like water and hydration in, and then the bad stuff like irritants and microbes out of your skin. So in general, to have healthy skin, it's a good idea to moisturize just to keep your skin barrier healthy and flexible. Um, but it's even more important, in my opinion, for sensitive skin. So if you tend to have oilier skin that's sensitive, obviously you would want to look for maybe a serum or a gel or a lightweight lotion. And then if you have drier sensitive skin, you might want to look for a product that is more of a cream or a lotion, something that will better moisturize your skin and be a little bit heavier. So you can think about, you know, how much oil does my skin produce and then proceed accordingly with finding a fragrance-free um, product with the right consistency and weight for your skin. Ingredients that I like to look for in a moisturizer would be hyaluronic acid. This is a humectant. Um, which is a really fancy word for a hydrator. And what hyaluronic acid does is it uh, attracts and binds hydration or water within the skin. So it's just a very, very strong hydrator. Um, and then other ingredients that I really like in moisturizers would be um, squalane um, or um, another category of ingredients would be ceramides. So these are just kind of very well-known trusted ingredients when it comes to hydrating and moisturizing the skin. And if you're trying to kind of navigate and figure out what products are for you, these are great ingredients to look for and they're in a really wide variety of, of um, products as well. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. Please let me know below if you have any questions whatsoever. And please also remember to subscribe to my channel so you can see more super nerdy videos from yours truly about all things beauty. Thanks guys.